Hey y'all, N4H and H here chasing a soda station in Colorado, George KX0R. Uh, currently I'm using the doublet antenna and I can barely hear him in there. Uh, I was on Soda Watch 3, the Soda Watch page, and I know he's there because he's spotted for this frequency. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna um I won't pan up there, but you may, you've seen my video where I show you that I can remotely control my Elecraft amplifier. I'm going up to the software. Well, I'll pan up there for a second. Going up to the software in the lower left of the screen, and I'm going to select Antenna 1 instead of Antenna 2. Antenna 2 is my doublet. 250 feet of wire fed in the middle with ladder line. I've featured it on some uh, Ballon videos in the last couple of months. Okay, this is Antenna 1. And Antenna 1 is a uh, ZS6BKW. You've heard me talk about that one a lot on the channel. In fact, I've given one away. There he is. Now I'm going to switch back over to the doublet. See, we're, we're losing. Back to Antenna 1, which is the ZS6BKW. Now, why is that? In fact, the, look, listen, or listen, the noise floor goes down. That's him, KX0R. There's the, there's the doublet. A little more noise floor, but less of him. Interesting, isn't it? I'm gonna see if I can work him and then I'll tell you some more. There we go. Five, six, nine. Well, I'll go back to him. Okay, got him. Um, I was, by the way, I was, in case you're curious, I was using 786 watts on that one. Uh, sometimes these, I mean, that's a lot really for CW. I didn't intend to. I do like to run five or 600 though uh, with these QRP stations because sometimes they're using a compromised antenna. So he gave me a 569. I gave him a 539 and you're thinking, wait a minute, that meter wasn't moving. That's true. But he sounded like a 539 to me. And if you've watched enough of my videos, you know that the S meter cannot be trusted, especially in CW, when you're running with a tight filter, which I was. Let me pan over and show you the setup. I'm going to undo everything. Okay, so right now you're listening through a 600 hertz filter. Now, if I, if I pan over, you can see the S meter's moving more. He's fading again. I saw it hit almost three there for a, for a minute or for a few seconds. Go to the doublet, lose him. Back on the ZS6BKW. Okay, enough of that noise. Going over here to DSP. Okay, I'm not going to pan back over there, but he's hitting about two, and, two to two and a half on the meter. There he's hitting three. Okay, here comes digital noise reduction at 15, algorithm 15. Width at 50. Now, sometimes if I'm not sure where they are, I might widen this out a little bit. But once I lock on to them, I go to 50. And APF. Wow, isn't that cool? Now, I am using AMP 2, all right, which the S meter is calibrated at AMP 1, I, I, I know. And, uh, but it's calibrated at amp, well, with AMP 1 at 14.2 megahertz. Chances are it's probably still fairly close or as close as it can be at this frequency. 
Uh, but remember, man, these S meters, they're just, they're not, they're not exactly the 6 dB per S unit that, he, uh, you know, was they were supposed to be. But remember, an S meter is supposed to reflect a change in the loudness to your ear, and it takes a 6 dB change uh, for you to notice that difference. That's, that's why they arrived at the 6 dB per S unit, but most radios don't adhere to that. But I go by how he hears. <laughs> Sorry, I go by how he sounds. And listen how clear that is. So uh, you might be thinking, well, okay, why in the world is your ZS6BKW beating your doublet? Well, get, get this. The ZS6BKW antenna is in the doublet family. It is an antenna fed with ladder line, and, and, you know, in this case, window line, 40 feet of it. And then you have coax after that. In fact, they recommend 70 feet minimum of coax because, well, the coax is involved in, in the match. Uh, you know, so a doublet um, would require an antenna tuner, and uh, for most bands, I do. I did tweak mine a little bit by adjusting the length of the ladder, of the ladder line, so mine actually does operate with about a 1.1 SWR here on uh, 18 megahertz, 17 meter band. Uh, my my doublet. Now, interestingly enough, I'm also not needing the antenna tuner with the ZS6 BKW. That's because it has resonance on the uh, FM portion of 10 meters, 29.6 to 29.7 megahertz. Also, 12 meters, 17 meters, 20 meters, and 40 meters. No antenna unit uh, match required. No antenna tuner, as they're called, um, which is good. Now, with, with a wide-range antenna tuner, that antenna can be used on the other HF bands up through 80 meters. Now, it wouldn't be long enough to do 160 meters. My doublet is. My doublet is actually uh, 250 feet long. It would be long enough to do, and, and I do use it for 160 meters. And with that much wire in the air, it is going to normally be more gain than any of my other antennas, uh, really, on these higher frequencies. And that is the case even on this band. The problem is, every time you go higher in frequency from what that antenna is cut for, um, it's going to develop more lobes of gain and therefore some nulls. The lobes will get stronger, but they'll get more narrow and you'll get more nulls. So apparently uh, the mountain that George is on in Colorado uh, is, falls in a null for my uh, doublet antenna, but for my ZS6BKW, um, it must have fallen into one of its uh, lobes of gain. So that's why I'm able to hear George on that. That's why I'm always telling you if you can, and I, you know, I only have a third of an acre, <laughs> and the house is sitting on most of it, um, but somehow I've managed to get four antennas up. Okay, in the case of the doublet, my neighbor was kind enough to let me use one of his trees, so otherwise I wouldn't be able to have 250 feet of wire in the air. But my point is, try to have at least one, uh, at least one extra antenna, at least two antennas. Uh, try to install them perpendicular to one another so their lobes of gain are. Um, you know, opposite. But there you have it. That's why I tell my wife I can't have too many antennas. So, you know, the truth is at least two wire antennas um, perpendicular to one another. So they're low at, and, oh, oh, and of the same type would be ideal. I don't have that. Um, but if you can, put up two of the same type. And if you don't have the room for a 160 meter, you know, for 250 feet of wire, Grab a couple of these, uh, especially if you're limited for space and you want to work multiple bands. Grab yourself a, Z a ZS6 BKW. I got mine from NI4L.com. I couldn't justify building it for uh, the low price he bills them for. They're made handmade to order in North Carolina. NI4L.com. Get two of them and mount those uh, antennas perpendicular to one another, and you're going to be able to have lobes that... Uh, the lobes of one antenna will cover the gaps of the other antenna. So it's a really good system to be able to have a nice circular pattern. I say circular pattern, circular coverage. Uh, so I, George is finished now. So I'm glad we caught him when we did. I just wanted you to hear that the noise floor went down, but his signal came up. Isn't that interesting? Well, the, the longer antenna is going to also uh, draw in more noise because of its additional gain. 
but it didn't have the gain in the direction where George was. And so uh, that's why we were hearing mostly noise. Switching over to the ZS6B BKW, it's not as long. It's 94 feet across versus 250 feet. Um, and it has 40 feet of this window line that I'm, that is necessary, by the way. It needs to be 40 feet, and it comes with it already tuned and cut and ready to go. All you have to, all you have to do is add the coax to bring it into the shack, 70 feet minimum. So it's pre-tuned and has its ladder line or window line in this case. It's a 420-ohm window line, and that's all that um, specialness about it is why Chris Fox, NI4L.com, has been able to make that antenna uh, work so well and be mostly a, less than a 1.5 SWR across the bands I mentioned and, um, uh, and tunable on others. So it's got less wire in the air, so less gain, but it just so happened to have a lobe in the direction that I needed that was where the doublet had a null. So the doublet was hearing mostly the noise from whatever direction it was, um, it was listening in. So uh, that's a, just wanted to give you that example of why I like to have at least two antennas, same type, mounted perpendicular to one another. So you get the, you get the gain lobes from one filling in the nulls of the other. Okay, hope that made sense to you. And if you're um, uh, you know, interested in more information about the ZS6BKW, just Google it and read about it. Um, but there are various versions out there. Uh, you can build your own. You can buy one. The best I have seen, also, the, wow, the highest quality construction is the one from NI4L.com. All right, hey, thanks for watching the video. I do appreciate you doing that, and thank you to the Patreon team. They bring these videos to you. They make them possible. And uh, if you would like to join the Patreon team and help me continue to bring this type of content, uh, because without them, this stops. I just can't, I can't do it. Uh, but if you'd like to join that team, go to www.patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. That's patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. Uh, it's down here at the bottom of the screen. And um, one other thing, please, if you would, smash that thumbs up. Click that like button on the video. That helps us out with YouTube. And uh, I would much appreciate that. And, of course, consider subscribing to the channel. If you do subscribe, uh, be sure to click the notification bell, and uh, you'll, you'll be notified every time I upload a video, generally one a week, sometimes two a week. Hey, thanks again for watching in 73 from N4H&H. &H.